Hello, welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm your host, Sarah Scully, and continuing with t this week's theme of dishes to make for Thanksgiving, I wanted to tell you about my pumpkin pie recipe today. Um, like the cranberry sauce that I mentioned yesterday, this was another one that I did not like as a child. Um, I think it was something to do with the earthy nature of the pumpkin, and I was sort of expecting everything to be sweeter. It's you know, it's supposed to be dessert, right? Um, but at, like many of you, um, my taste developed and changed as I got older, and now I really like it. Um, this uh, pie recipe was heavily adapted from one I found on another website, um, and I do give credit for that in the recipe notes, which I'll link to. Um, but uh, one note I will start off with is to say that um, you shouldn't use canned pumpkin. In my experience, I've tried a bunch of different brands. They all taste metallic -y like the can they come in. Um, and I think that's just a, a factor from kind of the industrial canning process. So I really think that roasting your own pumpkin fresh is important. And if you can't find a good sweet pie pumpkin in your area, um, and pie pumpkins are separate from the things that you carve at Halloween. Um, pie pumpkins are short and squat and they're you know, usually pretty small. They're usually wider than they are tall. Um, and those are more sugary and so they're nice to use for dessert. Um, so if you can't find one of those, you can use some other orange vegetable like a butternut squash. Um, you can use red curry squash, which I think some people mistake for pumpkins. They're bright, um, kind of an, a vermilion color, and they're often right next to the pumpkins in the grocery store. Um, but those are a squash, but you can use those. Uh, you could use a sweet potato. Um, and yes, technically that would be sweet potato pie, but you know, it's very similar flavors. Um, it's gonna be orange and creamy and on the Thanksgiving table, and if you don't say anything, no one will know. So, um, Grab your orange vegetable of choice. You're gonna to want to roast that off um, until it's nice and soft and squishy, and then wait for it to cool down, discard the rind, and then blend it up in your food processor. And you can do all this way ahead of time. Um, one year we had some volunteer pumpkins in our compost pile, and they did really well, um, better than any kind of melon I've tried to plant uh, intentionally. So. I harvested them, I cured them off, and I stored them in the basement. And then a few weeks later, I just roasted them all up and um, put the flesh in my freezer, and I had it all portioned out so that I could make several pies over the winter. Um, so you can do you can do the roasting and the, the prep um, way ahead of time and then uh, freeze that if you'd like. Um, when it comes time to actually make your pumpkin pie, you're going to want to strain that roasted flesh really well. And I actually um, take kind of balls of it and squeeze all the liquid out um, because you're going to be adding liquid back into the recipe and so you don't want your pie filling to be too soupy. Um, now to thicken your pie, we're going to make a custard, but we're going to make it in with the pumpkin. So it's really not that difficult. You're just going to add one whole egg and two egg yolks and some whole milk in with your pumpkin and um, as that cooks it's naturally going to make itself into a nice firm custard. Um, for spices I like to use allspice, ground ginger, and a little bit of cinnamon. I don't go crazy with the cinnamon because it's such a pronounced taste and I think all too often people put too much of that in and then it just tastes like cinnamon pie um, and you can't really taste anything else. So go easy on the cinnamon if you want to mix up the flavors, that's fine. And then for sweetener, of course, we're going to use Vermont maple syrup. Um, because maple has a natural earthy taste, I think that goes really well with any kind of a root vegetable or winter squash. Um, so I think those two things really complement each other in this recipe. And I don't overly sweeten uh, my pie. I like to serve it with vanilla ice cream. Um, you could also serve it with sweetened whipped cream. So you're gonna get a little dose of sugar with whatever you serve it with. Um, and then another shortcut that I use is I use a pre-made frozen pie shell. Um, there's a brand locally that I can get that's an all butter crust and I've read the ingredients carefully. They don't have any weird 
stabilizers or, or other chemicals in there. Um, so that's what I use, but you, of course you can make your crust from scratch. Um, I've done it, but I'm not great at pastry, so I tend to skip that and skip the stress and hassle um, and just go right to the freezer section. Now you're going to want to parbake your crust before you put your filling in. So you're going to cook that empty pie shell for about 10 minutes and then um, add your filling in and continue baking until the filling is uh, all set up. And then I like to leave it out on the counter for about half an hour and then refrigerate it overnight before serving it the next day. Then you get a nice firm um, pie. But you can um, just continue chilling it down on the counter if you wanted warm pie on the day of your dinner. Um, just uh, let it cool down completely for four or five hours um, before serving. So you could make the pies in the morning before everybody comes over for dinner and they'd be ready to go. The complete instructions for this are going to be on our website. And again, I would love to know if you're making the recipes and enjoying them. Um, please leave a comment uh, on the video or on our blog and let us know. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Cheers!